Hello and welcome to Exotic Ghana UK, Yorkshire Chris Weekly. And on this week's episode, we're looking at those jobs to do in the month of May. So in the month of May, and May I think is probably the busiest month for me in the garden and probably for most exotic growers as well. It is so busy because this is the month we finally get all our half hardy and tender plants out into the garden, planted out, potted up as well and the show really starts in May. But depending on the weather, the show might start in mid-May or it might start in late May. So you've got to look at your location before you can start thinking about bringing out all your plants. I've done a separate video on hardening off your plants and I'll post a link to that in the description below and up above as well on the card. So check out that one because that explains why we harden off plants and how to do it and when. But I've given the game away a little bit because obviously when is May basically. May is a month for most people, April for some. May for most and if you're in the far north of the country maybe early June. So in May we get all our plants hardened off and we get them planted out into the ground. So for me this means things like colocasias we've planted out, the cannas, the bananas, the dahlias and all my very tender plants like my irisine and flowers like petunias zinnias, cosmos, things like that, all the really sort of tender things can come out in the end of May and grow away. So it is a busy month because there's lots and lots of plants to plant out. You've got to think about how you're going to plant them, where you're going to plant them, think about colour combinations, think about the sizes and how they're going to look at from different angles if you've got island beds like I have as well and if you've got pots which way to face them. So there's lots and lots to do. And it's the most exciting one for me, I think, because getting, all, getting out all the plants and sort of designing the garden each year, it's a lot of work, but it gives you really exciting displays of plants throughout the summer. So you do all the hard work in May and over winter as well, obviously, to get them to this stage. And then we can sit back and relax from June onwards, apart from watering and feeding, and can watch the plants get bigger and brighter and better throughout the season. So that is the main job to do in May, is get those plants out. But there's other things to do as well. So we've got to continue feeding plants. So we've had the blood fish and bone down around since sort of April round, the sort of hardier plants that have been in the ground all the year. But we can start feeding the plants that really want a bit of growth. So things like the tetrapanax, the gunnera that have been in the ground and really wanting to push out the bigger, better leaves they'll be getting the chicken pellets, chicken manure. That's a really good strong, well not strong, but it's a really good organic feed that you can use time and time again to really bulk up the leafy plants. And we can start liquid feeding and pellet feeding, also potted plants that you're gonna have out in the summer and also those that you put in the ground as well. So there's lots to do, feeding, planting out, and also enjoying the weather. And the weather is very important because May can be such a weird month. You can have beautiful warm days, but you can still have nighttime frost if you're in the Midlands and the North, very rarely in the South. And that can really determine when you can finally plant out your plants. But for most of us, May will have lots of warm days and the nights are getting milder too. The nights are the most important thing when we're looking at planting out plants because we need the, day, the nighttime temperatures to be at least five degrees at worst, but ideally we want it to be 10 degrees overnight for the lows for plants, for the most tenderest plants to be planted out. And we talked about the hardening off in a separate video, mention it here now, but what you've got to do if you're not sure when to start the process is look at the long range forecast or the mid range forecast and what you want to see is the nighttime temperatures sort of like 9, 10, 11, 12 degrees minimum all for the next 10 days. Once you get a nice run of 10 days where the lowest temperature 
is about eight, nine degrees. You might have the odd six or seven, but ideally no lower than seven or eight at the lowest. Then you can start planting out your plants. You can be confident that the nights are going to be warm enough and definitely frost free for your most tender plants. And they can go into the ground without being checked once they've been hard enough, of course. So this is a month to do that job. Now, depending on how cold your winter and spring has been, the plants you've left in the ground that you've now uncovered should be showing signs of life. They could be in full leaf or they could be just sprouting. So in this case, we've got the Colocasia pink china. See, the pink stems are looking okay, but we haven't got any leaves yet because it's been a very cold winter and spring this year. But these could be in leaf easily by now. I've had these in leaf in March before. So these now will get frosted again because we're past all the frost, apart from the very light frost we could possibly get in May, which don't last long at all because we have the nice strong sunshine. So we've got the colocasias up. We've also got gingers sprouting. This is ginger Hidicium forestii, probably the hardiest ginger, and that nicely shoots quite early. But gingers might not come above till the end of May sometimes into June but then as soon as they get up above ground they're very very quickly put on height and by the end of June they'll be at pretty much full size. Canners should be shooting by now winter May and depending on again how cold the winter's been they might be quite high up and in leaf or in my case this year they're only a few centimeters above ground but it won't take long now the soil's nice and warm for these plants to shoot up and produce a wonderful display come summer. One of the main spring highlights in the garden is the scent from the chocolate vines. I've got two growing over the archway here, a whitish cream one and the traditional purple one. And the fragrance is absolutely sensational. It's called the chocolate vine because it smells like vanilla and chocolate. And these blooms, absolutely gorgeous and every single time I walk under this archway I get hit by the wonderful fragrance of the chocolate vine. Just a shame that later on in the season it stops flowering and people can't experience this fragrance when they visit the garden but it does produce some wonderful bright blue purple sausage like fruit later in the season which are highly unusual and always get people's attention. Thank you for watching this edition of Exotic Garden UK Join me next week where we'll be doing more in the garden.